Greetings, humans. You have entered the Command Zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. How's it, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Command Zone podcast. I'm your host, Josh Lee Kwai, and uh, joining me today is not Jimmy Wong. It is one of our Game Nights editors, Manson. Yo, yo, it's me. What's up, everyone? It's me, Manson. You might remember Manson. He's been on a couple episodes of Extra Turns. He's been on our podcast before, but uh, you're one of the people that brings game nights to uh, the fine folks out there every single month. Yeah, yeah. Bring it up to life. Bringing it to life. Uh, and Manson, also a big commander player. So he is here today because he is the team member that is responsible for... Strafon. Yeah, for Strafon, for this pre-con deck that we're going to be talking about today, which is Vampiric Bloodline, uh, Manson has gone through, sort of dissected the deck and decided what 10 cards he's going to suggest or we're going to suggest adding to the deck, which 10 to take out. Uh, but we're also going to go through you know, some of the reprint value and some other things about the deck in here and just give you a good, nice budget upgrade guide for how you can take this deck, make some quick tweaks, get it ready for battle, and then, you know have a chance against the quote-unquote real decks as soon as possible because i know when i buy these things i, I want to get you like i want to play them very sure. soon but if you just take it straight out of the box and play against your friends decks that they've been playing for years it can be a little tough yeah. but we found the precons are actually pretty close where it's just a few cards in and out and you can often get them up to see speed pretty quickly yeah bring it to the next level bring it to the next level um but before we get into it we got to talk about our sponsors you know if you want to get your hands on this uh vampiric bloodline deck or maybe the uh, the other deck which is called uh, spirit squadron i think yep or any of the cards from Crimson Val, you want to get draft boosters, set boosters, collector booster, any of the singles, you can order all that stuff right now at channelfireball.com slash command. Channel Fireball has a new marketplace, which means they have multiple vendors uh, vying for your business, which is great because it brings the prices on cards down because they try and undercut each other. It also means their inventory is very, very large because there's uh, instead of just one vendor that you're buying from, there's a ton of different vendors. So usually, almost always, if there is a certain card you're looking for, Channel Fireball Marketplace will have it. Uh, and also, Channel Fireball does this thing where they vet their vendors, so they actually make sure they have a business license and things like that so that uh, you know you're going to get a professional level of service. And then when you get your hands on those cards from channelfireball.com slash command, you want to protect that stuff. And the oh, products yeah. that we trust here at the Command Zone that Jimmy and I use on our own collections are from Ultra Pro. They really do make the best sleeves and deck boxes to protect your game pieces. This stuff is valuable. You know, if you get a uh, showcase foil version of something Ooh. to put in your deck, yeah, you, you don't want to get banged up in any way. So making sure that you put it into a nice Eclipse sleeve or use a Satin Tower de deck box or a Mythic Collection deck box or the Mythic Collection binders are super, super nice. Ultra Pro also has things like wall scrolls and uh, really nice play mats, other ways to sort of spice up your game room and your battlefield. So make sure you support uh, our sponsors. It does support us. And then the final way to contribute to our content is directly if you go to patreon.com slash command zone. Patrons get all kinds of cool per cool perks like uh, watching game nights and extra turns earlier than the general public. We also shout out one lucky patron every single episode. And this episode is dedicated to David Aquino. David you rock. Yeah, buddy. Big thanks to all of our patrons. You really do uh, help us make all of our content. We appreciate you so much. Okay, let's get into the main topic here, which is the Vampiric Bloodline Precon Budget Upgrade Guide. Now, we did do a reveal video for this, right? Yeah, so we did the reveal video just sort of uh, going over. It was Murph and I going over what was in the deck um, because that was the first time the, the world was kind of seeing it, talking about the new cards a little bit. Uh, this video is not going to be like that. This video, we're telling you how to upgrade the deck, but we're giving ourselves a budget of $30 to do so and only 10 cards total changed out. We want it to be quick. We want it to be easy. We don't want it to be expensive. Uh, so if you want to know sort of a little bit more breakdown of what the new cards and stuff are in the deck, then you should watch episode 430 of our podcast, which was, I think, last week or maybe the week before. The one with Murph. Yep, the one with Murph. Um, okay. we're Oh, one other thing. When we do these budget upgrade guides, we normally don't mess with the mana base much. Right. Yeah, it's just not that exciting to mess with the mana base. And we found that pre-con mana bases, generally, they, they work pretty fine. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty good. Obviously, if you have shocks and fetches, put those in there. Uh, you don't need us to tell you that. Okay, let's talk about the new commanders in the deck, first of all. So um, we've got the face commander, which is the playmat you've got in front of you, the oh, ultra yeah, pro playmat, I might say. Uh, it's Strafon. Do you want to read Strafon here, Yeah, Manson? So Strafon costs two black and a red for a 3-2 legendary creature vampire noble. Um, as flying, at the beginning of your end step, create a blood token for each player who lost life this turn. 
and whenever Strafon attacks, you may sacrifice two blood tokens. If you do, you may put a vampire card from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. It gains indestructible intent until end of turn, and uh, and it doesn't pretty it, good. Yeah, it seems I, I every time I read Strafon, I think it's going to say sacrifice it at the end of turn, but it actually doesn't. So Strafon is like Kalia, yeah, sort of, but for vampires. So it puts the the creature from your or the card creature card from your hand into play and. It taps and attacking, but it just stays there. It doesn't like bounce back to your hand or anything. You've got it on the battlefield from then on out. And it does get indestructible until the end of that turn, so it's hard for it to die, to die yeah. that turn. Um, it's pretty good guard. Pretty, pretty powerful. Let's talk about blood tokens really quickly in case uh, anybody watching or listening ha- doesn't know what a blood token is. We should probably explain it. This is a new kind of artifact, a new kind of token that's uh, brand new as of Crimson Vow. Obviously, it's the vampire set, so it makes sense. Yeah. A blood token is uh, an artifact. You pay one, tap it, discard a card, and sacrifice the blood token, sacrifice this artifact, and then you draw a card. So one tap, discard, sack. It's a lot of cost to draw a card. Right. Um, but Strafan uses the blood tokens in other ways than their activation, right? He sacrifices them to put a, a, a powerful card from your hand, a vampire, into play. Right. I think the, the fact that they're artifacts, too, makes this, like, pretty good, right? Yeah. So there's, artif- there's decks that care about just having a lot of artifacts, so that would matter. Um, and then also... Some decks want to discard cards on purpose to get things, certain things into the bin or they have right. madness or things like that. Yeah. So there's some usefulness there. Wanted to note that there are 25 cards from the main set that make or care about blood tokens. Um, 23 create blood tokens and, and a couple of them only just sort of reward you for having blood tokens. Most of those are commons and uncommons though, not commander playable. And right. then there are six other cards from this deck that make or care about blood tokens. So there's about 30 uh, cards in the history of magic at this point. So this is the first time blood tokens have ever happened. Uh, they care about blood tokens. So, um, still, it's a good amount ish. I mean, I think if all of them were good, but they probably right. all aren't, right? Like right. six or seven of them are. So you're probably building around the vampire part more than the blood token part, right? You're probably s- planning on sacrificing the blood tokens to get vampires into play more than using the blood tokens in other ways. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about, um, there's a couple other commanders in here. There's Timothar, Baron of Bats. So this sweet. Yeah, it's mono black though, so it can't be the commander of the deck out of the box. You'd have to build a new deck around Timothar. But it's four black black for a four four vampire noble. It has ward discard a card. So that means if somebody goes to target this creature, they will have to discard a card to get past the ward. It's interesting. Yeah. And then it says, whenever another non-token vampire you control dies, you may pay one and exile it. If you do create a 1-1 one, one black bat creature token with flying, and it gains when this creature deals combat damage to a player, sacrifice it and return the exiled card to the battlefield tapped. So it's almost like when a vampire dies, it becomes a bat. And then if the bat hits something, it turns back into the vampire that it was. Pretty flavorful, actually. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, But be careful because if the bat dies before it's dealt combat damage, then the thing that got exiled is just never coming back. Yeah, it's forever exiled. Yeah, so I think you obviously want like sack effects and then vampires with like ETB effects. So you get the ETB when it comes in, you sack it, it makes a bat, the bat hits somebody and the thing comes back and gets you the ETB again. Yeah. Yeah, which is cool. And then you could kind of repeat that process too because now the thing's back on the battlefield, you could sack it. Just do it again. Yep. Uh, but again, mono black, so probably stays in the deck, but can't be the lead singer of this deck out of the box because you have red in there. And then there are the partner with commanders. Um, obviously, there's two of them because they're partner with. You want to read them? Yeah. So the first one is Camber the Plunder. It's three and a black for a 3 4. Um, legendary creature, vampire rogue. It has partner with Lauren, the Diversion. Obviously, it's partner. It has lifelink, and it also has whenever a creature and opponent control dies, you gain one life and create a blood token. And then its partner, Lauren, the Diversion, is two and a red for a 3-3. Three, three. It has first strike. You can pay two, sacrifice an artifact or creature, go target creature. I like that it says an artifact or creature. We talked about this on the reveal video, but the fact that it doesn't say blood token or creature. So any artifact you could attack. Yeah, this pair is awesome. Play, play right well with each other. Yeah, they play really well. So I think Laureen is pretty good on her own probably will be used. Let me ask you, Manson, when you were going through and sort of breaking down the deck and deciding, you know, what cards to add and what to take out, right. did you make any consideration for playing Camber and Laureen as the commander's in your command zone to start the game or was it just like no i'm for sure going with strip on yeah for sure thought about it because the these two effects i feel like are really powerful with each other but i don't think um the deck itself had a lot of support for these two and um it was mainly focused on like the big vampires we should say, because we didn't say this, I guess, when we talked about Strafon, we did see it in the, say in the reveal video. Right. You know, the interesting thing about Strafon, because it cheats 
uh, vampires onto the battlefield is that traditionally, I think most vampire decks like Edgar and Alenda and those things have been go wide strategies. Yeah. Uh, you want a lot of little vampires. You're probably making token vampires. And those are, you know, you want to get a big board state with a, a, a large number of vampires, then pump them all at once and then win that yeah. way. Yep. Yeah. Stravon is more focused on like, let's get a couple really big vampires. So it's going tall rather than wide, um, which is probably more supported in the deck. And we'll see that here because we're going to talk about the stats 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 you're good at that <laughs> <laughs> almost like you got the podcast for a year yeah crazy <laughs> right <laughs> uh so let's go through the stats of the deck the base stats the sort of uh commander deck building template stats here the ramp there are seven ramp cards in the deck probably a little low we like closer to 10 um there are 11 card draw cards in the deck that this seems Pretty good. Yeah, we usually, again, want 10. Nine targeted removal spells. That actually seems pretty good. That I'm putting yeah. about 10 to 12 in my decks these days. Yeah, I'm so. putting around that much, too. Yeah, and there are four board wipes. Whoa. Yeah, which is actually a little higher than I'm doing these days. But I say three to four is probably around where you want to be. So the stats look pretty good. Ramp's maybe a little bit low. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. ramp is definitely low on this. Let's talk about the deck-specific stats here um, that'll kind of give us, a, hopefully, like a, a, a landmark or a reading on which direction to take the deck. Do you yeah. want to go through these? Yeah, so there's 34 vampires in this deck. So a lot. A lot. Yeah. I'd say anything between, like... 25 to 35 that kind of tells you what the theme of the deck is right yeah. like if you have 25 to 35 of something that, that that's what the deck's probably doing and then there are six blood token synergies okay not a lot but uh, you'll, you'll get to play around maybe a little with that a good amount though um there's nine sacrifice oh okay that's decent interesting. amount yep um and then there's eight discard slash madness cards and uh, we didn't say this earlier, but blood tokens do work well with madness because they do cause you to discard a card. So madness says when you discard this card, you can pay this cost and then you actually get that effect or you cast that spell. And then you would still draw the card off the blood token. So it right. actually kind of adds draw card to madness, which is cool. Do that instant speed too. Yeah. It's pretty neat. What do you think about when you see the stats? Well, I definitely saw that the ramp was really low in this. Uh -huh. Considering it's a, you know, big vampire deck, you want to be casting your big vampire. So ramping out, you know, kind of helps with that. Yeah, that's a that's a good point, right? Because Strafon does allow you to cheat big vampires onto the battlefield, but it's going to do, he's going to do that like once per turn. So you need to be able to eventually cast the right. big vampires yourself. So you're right. going to want more mana. Yeah, you so can't always rely on Strafon here. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Okay. I mean, not cool, but it's a cool <laughs> thing to notice. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let's talk about uh, the financial value of the deck, the reprint value. Um, again, we went, went over all this on the reveal video, so we won't go super in-depth here. We'll be brief. I want to remind everybody the prices we use are from before the deck has been revealed uh, because the prices obviously go down once the reprints are announced, but right. because we make our videos to announce the thing in the first place, we don't have the luxury of being able to even know the prices when we're making the original video. And then we want to base all our prices off the same moment in time. Otherwise we can't compare very well going <laughs> yeah. back. So we just kind of have to have to stay with that. So I know some other outlets like prof and uh, and uh, some other places they use they have different numbers because they're taking the value after the thing has been released but i think as long as you're comparing the same moment of time like they're not doing it wrong and we're not doing it wrong um we're just com you know it's, it's better for the comparison than it is for any single snapshot of what it is so for sure okay uh so the vampiric bloodline deck this deck the reprint value total is 95 dollars and 35 cents pretty good pretty good yeah um i'd say this that's like maybe middle of the road or right about average or maybe slightly higher than average that we see over the last few years for the commander products. You know, remember, these are not right. like pure commander products. These are, you know, we used to call them mini decks or set decks. Yeah, and I the think one-off sets. Yeah, I think they just kind of are commander products now because there's 15 new cards in these things. But for comparison, let's look at commander products from the last few years. Uh, commander 2019, the average reprint value of those decks, like of any one deck, was only $80. So that was really low, the lowest we've seen in a long time. Uh, Aquaria Commander 2020, the average reprint value is 96. So about what this deck is yeah, here. Which is good. Commander uh, 2021 for Strixhaven was average of 88, so lower than this. The Forgotten Realms ones were 115, so quite high. Those were just crazy, though. Yeah, and that was that's a lot higher than the 95 we're seeing from Vampiric Bloodline. And then the Midnight Hunt precons, which are the precons that immediately preceded this, we're an average of $103, so higher than what we're seeing for Vampiric Bloodline here. Um, remember, these values are only also taking into account the reprints. 
right all the new cards all that we don't have prices for right now so yeah, it's kind exactly. of hard to take into account they would just yeah it'd be like pre-order prices are weird they fluctuate a lot yeah. it's just yeah so this sits middle of the line i think the the reprint value feels like it's fine but nothing to write home about but also nothing to get real mad about it's just like yeah it's, it's all right i guess yeah that means it just has good reprints in them right yeah i mean hopes hopefully well let's look here uh let's talk about the notable reprints there are four cards in it that are worth five dollars or more nirkana revenant which is a four, a Ooh, six baby. mana four four that makes all your swamps tap for an additional mana. Uh, this was a seventeen dollar and twenty cent card before. Oof. Yeah, um, patron of the of the vein was a sixteen dollar card. It's a six mana four four vampire with flying. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you destroy target creature and opponent controls. And then whenever a creature and opponent controls dies, you put a one one counter on each vampire you control. That's why it's sixteen bucks. It's pretty good. Come in. Merc something, pump all your vamps. Right. Yeah. It's only got one reprint, so glad to see it here. Blood Artist, Aristocrat Staple was about six bucks. And then Cordial Vampire is a black black for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever uh, it or another cr creature dies, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on each vampire you control. So it is somewhat similar to the Patron of the Vein, although it doesn't kill something. But it's only a two drop that does this. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, pretty nice. So that was a $6 card before uh, the reprint here. And then there's about, what is that, six more cards that are $2 or more. So there's Knight's Whisper, Sanctum Seeker, Bloodline Necromancer, Anawan, the Rune Sage. Uh, those range between 3 and $4. And then there's two um, staple cards, which are, are nice to see reprinted. Vandal Blast and Blasphemous Act were 290 and 235 respectively. And um, those get a reprint as well, which... I put basically both of those cards in every deck that has red. Yes, which is great to see that them reprints because otherwise if they don't, then these just keep going up and up. Yeah, these are cards that if you, yeah, you got to reprint them because they, they're, they're needed in every deck with red, so. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's talk about, you know, you ch said you chose Strafon, but you did briefly think about Cambrar and uh, Loreen. Um, there's 34 vampires in the deck, so I'm assuming that had a, a, a big... Yeah. Uh, that had a really big impact. And plus all the, you know, big vampires, you want to be, you know, cheating them out, right? You don't want to be casting them for, you know, seven, eight mana, right? So it has a lot of the high CMC or high mana value vampires yeah. in it. So that was a, a good uh, signpost for you saying what the deck wanted to do. Right. And Lauren and Kembar care about, you know, sacrificing, right? You don't want to be sacrificing your big vampires. Uh, let's talk about what we think the best cards in the deck um, out of the box are. So the first one is Crossway Troublemaker. Um, it's a five and a black, five, five. Attacking vampires you control have death touch and lifelink. And whenever a vampire you control dies, you may pay two life. If you do, draw a card. So this, and it's a vampire, so it's a nice, this feels like a nice uh, vampire to sneak onto the battlefield with um, Strafon. Yeah, I said sneak, sure. but it's not sneak because you don't sacrifice it. it would cheat onto the battlefield with Strafon. Yeah, that's a better way to put it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this could just immediately come down, make it hard for, you know, uh, the blocking player. And to, you're going to gain a ton of life. Yep, so there's a life buffer to that because you want to be, you know, attacking all the time in this deck. Yep. So a life buffer is definitely um, nice. And also, like, there's the worry they could block Strafon and kill it. So at least you give Strafon death touch, which makes them less likely to want to do that. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty cool. Uh, the next card you have listed here as one of the best cards in the deck, and this is a really actually, I think, quite powerful card in general, um, but it's going to have to go in a vampire deck, which kind of keeps it in check. It's Markov Enforcer. It's four red red for a 6-6 six, six vampire soldier. When it or another vampire enters the battlefield under your control, Markov Enforcer fights up to one target creature and opponent controls. So it deals its power to that creature, and that creature deals its power back to the Markov Enforcer. But again, it's a 6-6. Six, six. So anything 5-5 five, five or under is going down when this enters the battlefield or whenever another vampire you control enters the battlefield. Yeah, it's a big body. That's pretty cool. Um, and it also says whenever a creature dealt damage by Markov Enforcer this turn dies, create a blood token. So another way to create blood tokens, um, you know, any anything small is just going to be dying every turn basically from this thing. Right. Any chance that you could get some blood tokens here and there is just good for Mar uh, Strafon. Yeah, because you need them to keep cheating things out. And, right. Yeah. Um, and then the last card you listed as the best card in the deck, because they can't all be the best card, is, <laughs> uh, well, it's Sign of Opulence. You want to read it? Yeah, so it's two and a red for a 3-1 creature vampire noble. Uh, whenever Sign of Opulence or another non-token vampire you control dies, create a treasure token. Love that. Uh, you could pay... The other ability is you can pay a red and sacrifice two artifacts, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. 
Oh, I like that because now I can use my blood tokens in other ways. Uh, exactly. In fact, I can turn two blood tokens into sort of impulsive card draw, which is nice because the blood tokens on their own have to discard cards and stuff to do it. Yeah, this thing's sweet because it's like ramp and card draw. Yeah. All in one card. You know what's good in Commander? Ramp, ramp and card, card draw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, very cool. Um, all right, so we're going to move on to the next section, which is everybody's favorite here, where we talk about the 10 cards we want to add to this deck and the 10 we, 10 we want to take out for $30 or less to get it up to speed. But before we go into that section, we're going to take a quick break, hear a message from our sponsors. Here, this big scary world, I, Norn the Wary, am leaving my cave. I know, it sounds foolhardy, but I finally got Simply Safe, the award-winning home security system that's just as pathologically vigilant as I am. Before, I could barely go an hour without worrying about all the bad things that could be happening to my unattended home. There could be a fire, my magic cards could get stolen, a bee could get in. But now, with Simply Safe's Black Friday sale, you can get a complete home security system starting at just over $100. I saved 50% on mine! They helped me customize my order online in minutes. And let me tell you, I got the works! Indoor and outdoor cameras, comprehensive sensors, even a lawn sign. All monitored around the clock by trained professionals ready to send help at instant speed. Now, thanks to Simply Safe, my cave home is the most secure place on Dominaria. Which suddenly makes me wonder what I'm doing out here in the open. Dear gods, I'm in danger! Ah, <sighs> daddy's safe now. Take advantage of Simply Safe's early Black Friday deals and get 50% off your new home security system by visiting simplysafe.com slash command. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash command for 50% off your entire system. Well met, we're Halana. And Alina, romantical partners. Every year, we face the age-old gift-giving problem. What do you get the skilled huntress who's capable of taking anything she wants from anyone? But if you're struggling to shop for the badass in your life, there's hope. Today, you can save big on a gift they'll use every day. Raycon wireless earbuds. We never hunt without them. Raycons feature amazing audio quality, but start at half the price of other premium brands. They have built-in mics that are perfect for phone calls or coordinating ambushes. And the new everyday earbuds feature three different sound profiles. Files. To focus while aiming my bow, I use Pure Mode, the perfect setting for instrumental music. And when I'm hacking and slashing monsters to bits, I blast hard rock using Balanced Mode. With eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, Raycons last through the stakeout, hunt, and ensuing feast. Oh, nothing tastes better than meat you killed while grooving out! Woo! Go to buyraycon.com slash command today to unlock exclusive deals up to 20% off your Raycon order. But hurry, this offer is available for a limited time only and you don't want to miss it. That's buyraycon.com slash command to unlock up to 20% off your Raycons. Again, buyraycon.com slash command. Hail, Thorosians! I, Gary Merchant of Asphodel, bring word of trade! The coffee subscription service fit for the gods! Halt! Coffee is not allowed here on Eryxmethes, the slumbering isle. The aroma could awaken our sleeping home. Trade is worth the risk. They aim to make every cup of coffee your best ever. I was sent this Colombian whole bean roast from Anodyne Roasting Co. I loved it so much, I had to spread the word. But our people know nothing of coffee. Just take Trade's coffee quiz, and they will guide you to the perfect match from over 400 craft coffees. Trade guarantees you will love your first bag, or they will replace it free of charge. And you can give Trade feedback as you sip, so as as your preferences evolve, so too will your coffee matches. I can resist no longer. Let the brewing begin! Ah. Oh. The island wakes! We're doomed! Totally worth it. For our listeners right now, Trade is offering your first bag free and $5 off your bundle at checkout. To get yours, go to drinktrade.com slash command and use promo code command. Take the quiz to start your journey to the perfect cup. That's drinktrade.com slash command, promo code command for your first bag free and $5 off your bundle. Enjoy. All right, we're back. We are talking about the bloodline, sorry, vampiric bloodline. Don't forget the vampire part, Josh. Vampiric <laughs> bloodline uh, pre-con from Crimson Vow. We are going to get into everybody's favorite section here, which is talking about the 10 cards that we would add to this deck for $30 or less to kind of get it powered up and ready to tangle with, uh, with quote unquote, real decks as fast as possible. Um, 
Want to make a note that all of our prices are using the new Channel Fireball Marketplace. Go to channelfireball.com slash commands to order your cards because you know you're going to order Magic Singles anyway. You might as well just support our content while you do it. Are we okay. at the beginning of the show again? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it doesn't hurt to plug it one more time. All right. Um, let's let's start off here, Manson. These are your picks, your 10 picks. So uh, let's start off with... Uh, it, what used to be one of the big vampire, um, I guess this is not necessarily a vampire tribal commander, just just a cool right. vampire. It was in just general. a really good card in like you know the way back when commander. It's still good. Yeah. So it's Drana Colostra Blood Chief. You could pay three black black for a four four legendary creature vampire shaman. It's got flying, and it has an activate ability where you could pay X black black. Target creature gets minus zero minus X until end of turn, and drawn a Colostria Blood Chief gets plus X plus zero until end of turn. So she saps something's uh, toughness and adds it to her power. Uh, so it kills stuff and makes her huge. Yeah, so, you know, it gets rid of all the blockers in front of Strafan or something. And, um, yeah, it's just a really good vampire. Yeah, one thing about Strafan's ability is that it costs no mana. So you attack with Strafan, sack two blood tokens, put Drana into play, tapped and attacking. No blockers have been declared yet. You can now activate Drana, be like, you know, if they had a blocker that could block Strafan yeah. or Drana, you can be like, drain that blocker away, make Drana bigger, hit you for a bunch. Um, or if there's no blocker, you don't have to do that. You can have threat yeah. of activation too, though. Um, yeah, which is always a big thing in Commander, I feel. Yeah, for sure. Because a lot of times they just won't block knowing you could do the drain thing and kill their thing. Right, and then you could... So they go, oh, and else. then then they, as a result, they don't block. And then you say, okay, well, I'm not going to even use my mana on that. But it just made it so you didn't block. You made a note here that there's a lot of the big vampires are already in the deck. So you, there wasn't a, left to, a lot left to choose from out there. Yeah, so when I was doing the upgrade, um, I was looking for all these big vampires that I wanted to include. And every single time I come into one, I'm like, oh, it's already in the deck. <laughs> so this is one of the few you quote unquote big vampires that wasn't already in the deck i like this as a big vampire because it's five cmc so it doesn't feel like you're you know getting you you really want to get six seven eight mana's worth if you could out of right but because the activated ability is there and your mana is still going to be open it actually feels a little more powerful than it right. maybe it would and it's a fairly cheap card at two dollars and thirty cents right it used to be you know way more a lot than more that. yeah yeah all right what's the next one uh, so the next one is Inspiring Statuary. I will read it. It is a three mana artifact. It says non-artifact spells you cast have improvise. And improvise means your artifacts can help uh, pay the cost of those spells. Each artifact you tap after you're done activating mana abilities pays for one generic mana. So now your blood tokens can help you cast your non-artifact spells. Right. And we mentioned earlier in this, uh, in this pre-con that the ramp section of this was a little low. So. so yeah, this is definitely a ramp card. And it could be a mega ramp card because you might play this on turn five or six and already have like eight blood tokens. So you can just be like, oh, I just added eight mana to my board every turn now. Yeah. And now you, now you could cast those big vampires for, you know, quote unquote less with those blood tokens. Yeah, that seems really, really good. Um, we didn't talk a lot about Strafan's first ability, which is when he enters the battlefield, you make a blood token for each player that has taken uh, or has lost life that right. turn. each player. Each player. So it even counts yourself, but it also means that you, you probably want some cards in the deck that are going to deal damage to everybody, um, you know, yourself included. So the next one on your list is Cryptolith Fragment. Oh, we should say, Inspiring Statuary is one of the more expensive cards you put on the list here, Manson. It's oh, yeah. $3.90. Uh, still definitely reasonable and a good card you're going to use in a lot of decks. This card, Crypto of Fragment, is a 40 cent card, so very <laughs> cheap. Um, because it's got narrow usage, but it is very good in this deck. So it's three mana for an artifact. It enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool, and each player loses one life. Oh, we like that. It's really good. So, and, and then it says, at the beginning of your upkeep, if each player has 10 or less life, you transform it. Um, we're not going to worry about the backside because it doesn't relevant. really matter. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing I love about this card is it's a three drop. So you play the, it's not like, um, it's not in a fight with Chiffon on the curve, right? Right. You play it before Chiffon and then the next turn, you use it to help cast Chiffon and it does all the damage to everybody or lose, makes them lose life. So that's, you're getting four blood tokens with right. it. Yeah. That's that's pretty sweet. Right. 40 cents. It's pretty good. 40 cents. I don't like three mana rocks very often, but I'll make an exception in this case. <laughs> uh, the next one is, oh, I'll let you read it. It says, along a similar lines. Right. So it's Spear Spewer. So it's one red for a zero two. It's got Defender, um, but you can tap it 
and it deals one damage to each player. Look each at that. player, yep. So again, and it's a one drop. I love that about it too. See, so it definitely can come out before Strafon. It's not a vampire, but you wouldn't want to cheat it out, taps and attacking anyway. Right. Uh, yeah, so this is just a way to guarantee that Strafon's going to get you those four blood tokens. Yeah. And, and it's nice because, you know, Strafon might die. I think it's going to be a, a candidate for removal because it's a scary card. Right. And, and it's so, kind of like card draw too because you do get the blood tokens, you discard, draw. That's a really good point, actually, because especially if you have excess lands, you can always like dump those into blood tokens. Yeah. Discard the card, draw a card, and it, then it really does become sort of card advantage there. So this is a 10 cent card, by the way, Spear Spear. Uh, all right, the next one is Storm Fist Crusader. Uh, black and a red, so two mana for a 2 2 human knight with Menace. Menace. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card and loses one life. This is nice. It's like there was a theme here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that these are attached. Well, Cryptolith Fragment and um, Stormfist Crusader are attached to other effects too. So one's ramp. This is card draw. Now everybody draws a card. Yeah. But still, in a Rakdos deck, you're generally not going to be out drawing like the blue, the Simic decks and things like that. So you drawing a card is actually... Like, if everybody draws a card, that's better for you than it is for the blue player. Yeah, plus in this deck, I think you want your hand to be really full at all times just because you want to be activating Strafon. You want the big vampires in your hand, so being yeah. able to draw them into your hand is is quite nice. The worst thing that can happen is that you attack with Strafon and you do not have a vampire yeah. to, to put out. So, yeah, and, and this draws it on your uh, upkeep. So your ability, you get to use the cards first before your opponents do, basically. Yeah. Uh, for for the most part, that's cool. This is a thirty cent card, by the way, so very cheap. You've gone with a lot of a lot of cheap ones. Are, are you saving up for something big near the end? No, uh, there is there is a good card here at the end. That's I noticed you came in quite a bit under budget, so good job. Yeah, it's kind of like I you know build budget decks on my own. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's talk about the next one. All right, so the next one is Relentless Assault. So it's two red red for a sorcery. Untap all creatures that attack this turn. After this main phase, there is an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. Oh, uh, yeah, I see what you're doing here. So this is cool. Uh, this card, by the way, is $1.30, so not expensive. Strafon attacks, trigger, sack two blood tokens, put a big scary vampire onto the battlefield, tap yep. and attacking, then play Relentless Assault, Untap those cards, attack again, Strafana triggers again, put an another one. Another one. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, so, you know, you get two attacks with the big vampires, and they all have indestructible too, so. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you could really put the hurt on somebody in one turn. This is the kind of play that probably can, like, knock somebody out of nowhere. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, the next card is similar. Um, it's a bit more expensive. This is $7. It sees the day. Three and a red for a sorcery. Untap target creature. After this main phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. So it's only one creature that, that it's not all your creatures that untap, but it has flashback for two and a red. So you can do this twice if you have seven mana. Yeah, um, that's what I love about this card. You, you being able to use this twice for one card, basically, and getting uh, double use for stuff on is just quite good, I think. And I think also just the turn four or five where you attack with Strafon the first time, you know, if you did the Spear Spear or the Cryptolith Fragment, you've got the four blood tokens. You go, boom, attack, put something big into play. Yep. Seize the day right now. Attack, put something else big into play. And now it's turn five and you have like, you know, 20 manners worth of creatures out there or maybe like 18 mana worth of creature out there. Like, you can be in a really scary position. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. All right. The next one is uh the the type of card that everybody loves which is the extra turn card but this actually what well, this one feels fine because it's very fair uh, what are you talking i feel like this is pretty sweet here no it's it's sweet i'm just saying people don't people are mad about extra turn cards these <laughs> days that's all uh, yeah it's because of fair. historic or um or i don't know arena in some way well people don't like extra turns much in, in commander but i think the one-off card like this is totally fine all right sorry too much preamble <laughs> too much preamble it's gaunty's ether heart so you can pay six mana for this artifact uh, legendary artifact actually and whenever Gonti's aether heart or another artifact enter the battlefield under your control you get two energy tokens what the heck energy energy <laughs> so you could pay eight energy exile Gonti's aether heart and take an extra turn after this one okay interesting so you would have to have four artifacts enter the battlefield while Gonti's aether heart is out yeah, how in order would you to do get that? the eight energy, how would you do that? Huh. Why would I put this in there? This is not an artifact deck. <laughs> so yeah, so you're gonna try and play Strafon 
um, after you, you know, after you spear spewed or whatever, and just get the f- the eight energy just all in one swoop. Yeah, exactly. You only need um, three players to lose life at that point because Gonti Aether Heart counts for two of them. Counts for two. All right. So yeah, and but, and but yeah, but a lot of your cards do it to everybody, so it's not gonna really matter that much. Right. You're, you're gonna get it. Right, and you know, extra turns are even better than good. an extra attack, as it turns out, because you get the extra attack also. <laughs> that yes, that is true, and you could crack this immediately actually, because Strafon and uh, activates at the end step, right? Oh, right. So on that end step, you those things come in, just and you go, "I'm going to use the energy it. now." So yeah, that's and then pretty just cool. get your extra, extra turn there. I like that. Uh, all right, there's two to go. Oh, sorry, Gonti's Ether Heart is only fifty cents. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next card is, we won't have to talk about it much because it's in a lot of commander decks, but it makes a lot of sense in this one. It's Lightning Greaves. Yeah, it's a little Man, bit Lightning boring. Greaves is almost $6 again? Yeah, crazy, right? This is how good the card is because every they reprint it like crazy, but it just maintains that price. Um, it's a two mana equipment artifact, equips for zero, and equip creature has haste and shroud. This one makes total sense because Strafon does not have haste. So if you can get this out on turn two, that means you went on the turn you play Strafon, you're going to be able to activate it. Now, that won't be yep. great because you won't have the blood tokens yet, right? Strafon gives them to you at your end step. Right. Uh, but the second or third time you play Strafon, it will be a lot better because you're liable to have a lot of blood tokens. But there are blood synergies here in this deck, right? So you might have some, you know, blood tokens lying around. So if, if Strafon comes out immediately, you know. Plus, you just have big vampires. So later on in the game, yep. your game plan's going. It's better to play your seven drop vampire out of your hand, put Greaves on it, attack, you know, rather than just having to cheat it in and play with Strafon. Or maybe you've got two and one can attack that way, one can be cheated in and play. So, right. bit yeah. of a boring pick, but it's a good card, I think. Yeah, sometimes you got to make the boring picks. You know, I, th- I think sometimes you got to make like the, 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 like this is a staple and this should go in this deck because our goal here is that your deck can roll, can rumble against the real decks. And so, you know, those type of cards are those type of cards for a reason. All right, the last one's pretty interesting, and I like it in tribal decks like this. So, uh, well, go ahead and read it. All right, the card is Patriarch's Bidding. So it's three black black for sorcery. Each player chooses a creature type. Each player returns all creatures of the type chosen this way from their graveyard to the battlefield. So you're gonna choose zombie. Just kidding. Vampires. <laughs> vampires. Vampires. Yeah, and and this is decks that play this. They're tribal decks. Uh, and usually the decks you're playing against are not. Every once in a while, you might be like, oh, crap, I'm against an elf deck, so it's going to hurt them too. It's going to help them too. But right. it, in general, it always helps you more than your opponents, like a lot more. Right. And if you're dropping, you know, big vampires every turn, they're bound to get removed by someone, right? So br- being able to, like, bring them back is really nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And this card is a dollar forty. So mass reanimation for your vampires. Um, you noticed that this card was... Over fifty dollars at one point. Yeah, this this thing uh, I think skyrocketed at when Edgar Markov was yeah. first released, right? So this was like a fifty dollar or something card. Um, but they original. reprinted it, so they brought the price down to a dollar forty, which was nice of them. Thank you, Wizards. Yeah. Uh, so the grand total here is twenty three dollars uh, worth of cards that you put in. So you still had seven dollars to play with, which I uh, did. You know, you could save for a rainy day now. Or more upgrades for the deck. <laughs> more upgrades. Well, let, okay, fine. Let's talk about possible um, possible honorable mentions here. The first one you put down is Erratic Portal, which is a four mana artifact. You pay one, tap it, and then return target creature to its owner's hand unless his controller pays one. Uh, almost always you put this in your deck to target your own creatures. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, that's what I was thinking in this deck um, because Strafon's always cheating out the big vampires, but um, the only reason I didn't really put it in here is because there weren't that many like enter the battlefield effects Mm. from what I saw from our big vampires. That's really what you want from Erratic Portal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You could cheat it out, bounce back your hand, cheat it out the next turn, get the ETBs. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, The next one you thought about was Bone Miser. Four yeah. and a black for a four four. Whenever you discard a creature card, you create a two two zombie. Whenever you discard a land card, you cre- you add black black to your mana pool. And whenever you discard a non creature non land, you draw a card. Right. So this is solely based off the blood tokens, right? Because mm-hmm. we're all, always going to have blood tokens, um, and being able to uh, get additional value off the discards is always nice. Um, so I really did think about this card a lot because it does do quite a lot. How much do you think when playing the deck that you're going to activate blood tokens? in that way versus sacrificing them to Strafon or some other effect. Yeah, probably like minimally, I would think, because you want to be sacrificing it again to Strafon. Um, yeah, even if you don't have Strafon out or you've got extra, you're going to want to save them for later. 
Yeah, but but exactly. sometimes, you, you know, it is kind of rummaging, which might be a thing you want to do if your hand just, you know, you, every time, like th- this happens in Commander, right? You look at your hand and it's four lands. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it just happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I can see Bone Miser being in there, but I think Bone Miser really wants to be a deck where you are, that's the main game plan of your deck is discarding cards. Not like that's a thing you might want to do sometimes. Right. Because there's just too much chance that you put it out there and just get no value off of it in that particular game. Right. All right, the next one, honorable mention, you want to read it? Is Mef- Mephidros Vampire, is that how you say it? That's why I asked you to read it, because I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> well, it's a 3-4 creature vampire with six, flying. Yeah, it's a 6 CMC. Oh, 6 CMC, yes. Um, each creature you control is a vampire in addition to its other creature types, and has whenever this creature deals damage to a creature, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. So this is another, you know, big vampire, right? But... I felt like it didn't have, you know, the big finishing power for the price that it's at because it's a $5 card right now. Also, all your creatures are already vampires. Yes, that is true too. And this this text, whenever a cre- this creature deals damage to a creature, creature. put a 1-1 counter on this creature. So that, that means actually, they had to block, right? Yeah, they would have to chump block. Yeah, exactly. Because if they block and kill you, you're not around to get the counter afterwards. And just chump blocking is very rare it might happen in a game but we're talking a couple of times so that text almost doesn't matter because it's like put a one put a, a counter on something and this is a six yeah. mana three four like yeah. it's not worth there's it. other effects i could do this too. yeah all right and the last one i could see a good argument for this one yeah because uh, this card seems very powerful with blood tokens it's cranial plating two mana for an uh, equipment artifact equip creature gets plus one plus oh for each artifact you control so blood tokens that's pretty good uh it has a quip cost of one but it also has an activated ability you can pay black back black sorry you can play two black and attach cranial plating to target creature you control at instant speed so this becomes this card is really scary when you've got let's say 10 blood tokens yes and plus 10 two plus or, 10 yeah Oof. And well, plus 10 plus 0. Oh, uh, plus 0, yes. Yeah. You, let's say you've got two or three creatures attacking now, though, or two, one Strafon and then another c- creature, and then you go Strafon, trigger, put another vampire out, and maybe they have a blocker. It doesn't matter because whatever creature they block with, you just slide the cranial plating to a different one if you want to. Or you slide the cranial plating to the one that gets blocked so you can kill the thing that yep. blocked, just depending on what you want to do. Yeah. This often just creates KOs because you just can't, you know, they can slide the cranial plating plating wherever they want to right and we, we usually have like a bunch of flyers in this deck too right so yeah usually so, someone at the table doesn't have flyers so it's a big hit what made you decide not to include this in your 10 cards to add then i think the one thing is because i'm not sure how many blood tokens we're actually able gonna be able to gonna get yeah and um, you're gonna sacrifice them to chiffon so are we talking like most of the game you've got two to four or most of the game you've got eight to ten yeah exactly and plus sometimes you know we've mentioned this you might want to rummage here and there so i'm not sure if this card uh would be good in the deck but maybe if you build around strafon itself and not the precon this might be an all-star in here yeah you might there might be a version of the strafon deck that is less focused on the vampires it has some but is more focused on like deal damage to everybody maybe sack and reanimate Strafon a lot to yeah, just using the generate a ton energies. of blood tokens. Yeah, and now you're really leaning into cranial plating, ether, uh, gear per ether grid, inspiring statuary, that kind of stuff. Yeah, all that's, those artifacts. That's a possibility. Cards. Yeah, artifacts are good. Okay, those were the ten cards to add to the deck, and uh, now we're going to talk about the ten cards to take out of the deck. The first one. I think it's going to create a little bit of controversy because I'm not sure I agree with it. So here we go. Yeah. It is. So the first one is Shadow Grange Archfiend. It is six and a black for an eight four demon, not a vampire. When a Shadow Grange Archfiend enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. You gain life equal to the greatest power among creatures sacrificed this way. And then it has a madness of two in a black plus pay eight life. So it's an A4, comes in, gets rid of the biggest things from only your opponents. Uh, and then you gain life for whatever the, the biggest thing. To- like, mm-hmm. you don't add those all up. You just say, who had the biggest thing? Okay, I gained that much life. Right. So, like, the first reason I had for this is because, well, it's a non-vampire, right? Mm-hmm. You can't cheat this out with Strafon. And it just becomes, you know, expensive, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I get that. I get that. I think the madness synergy would make me, you know, at least argue for keeping it because you do have blood tokens. So just take one right. blood token that does cost a mana. So you're kind of madnessing it out for four mana and eight life. But you do get to draw the card off the blood token. And the the fact that it's like a four mana, you know, kill 
three things. Uh, gain some of that life back that you paid. Who right. knows how much? Probably, my guess would be you're going to gain four to five on average because most boards don't have like an eight, an eight power thing out all the time. But I don't know. I just like that advantage, and I think it's strong enough in that case that I would argue for keeping it. But I got to admit, like I, I didn't go through the deck as much as you, so I don't know what I'd cut for it. Yeah, I mean, I just felt like you know it's similar to like Crackling Doom, right? Mm. And I've always found that card to get cut every single time I put it into a deck. So maybe it's just my experience with this uh, specific effect and how underwhelming I guess it is. Interesting, interesting. Okay, well, I can see that argument. I would say that uh, Crackling Doom doesn't draw you a card like the Blood Token will and doesn't leave back an 8-4 body. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a fair point. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's three color. <laughs> yeah. But I can see that comparison. All right, let's move on to a less contentious card. <laughs> uh, I think this card's good, but I agree it's not good in this deck. Right, so it's Imposing Grandeur. It's four and a red for a sorcery. Each player may discard their hand and draw cards equal to the greatest mana value of a commander they own in the battlefield or in the command zone. So it wheels of the CMC of your commander, kind of. Right, and in this deck, it's going to be four. You're going to be drawing four cards every time. Yeah, so... And and each individual player, it it they will wheel only if they want to based on the CMC of their commander. So right. it, it won't be symmetrical. I might have, you know, Thrasios as my commander, in which case I can only draw two, but somebody over there might have Carador, in which case they can draw eight. Yeah. Uh, so this could help your opponents more than you. And four is not enough, right? Like I think for, for five mana, for five mana, you might as well. Yeah, there, there are wheels at that price range that just guarantee that you're going to get seven every time. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I think I would want at least five CMC to ever think about running this card. And it becomes really good if your commander is six, seven CMC or more. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I agree with cutting it. Uh, the next one is a powerhouse <laughs> in the old days. And I understand why you cut it. It's Vampire Nighthawk. One black black for a two, three Vampire Shaman with flying death touch and lifelink yeah it's just a very underwhelming vampire you don't want to cheat this out and it i don't know it doesn't have a very big impact on a commander game i feel yeah i think it's just too it has too little impact it's not combo-y you might gain a couple life and kill a creature it might stave off an attack but in the end it's just not very efficient for us yeah. which is weird because in limited it's insane or in the old days it was maybe maybe not anymore. just casuals yeah i remember that uh, all right, the next one is an interesting pick. Molten Echoes for two red red, an enchantment. As Mol Molten Echoes enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever a non-token creature of the chosen type enters the battlefield under your control, create a token that's a copy of that creature. That token gains haste, exile it at the beginning of the next end step. Interesting, interesting. I would think that if I'm creating, if I'm you know, putting big vampires out on the battlefield, that this would be a card that reads pretty well to me. What was your thinking? So Sifran, uh, its trigger happens when it attacks, right? So you're already in the attacking phase. And when Molten Echo sees the big vampire coming in... It it's already tapped and attacking. Yeah, so it won't get a chance. The, the, the token that it creates won't get a chance to really have an attack on it. And then it just right, exiles at the end step. The declare attacker's part of the phase has already passed. passed You've yeah. already declared. So then it's just sitting there. So you really need enter the battlefield effects for this to be any good. Right. And as I mentioned earlier with like erratic portal, there weren't that many enter the battlefield effects in this deck itself. So I felt like it wasn't really a so good it, card in the deck. Interesting. That's a really good read uh, based on, you know, looking at the deck because I think just looking at the card, you would assume it would be good. But right. yeah, it doesn't interact very well with the way Strafon is, is sort of doing its thing. Yeah, I think it's a good card though. But Yeah, just not, not in this, this circumstance. Deck. Yeah. Okay, the next one uh, that we're cutting from the deck is Dark Imposter. Two and a black for a 2-2 two -two Vampire Assassin. You can pay four black black and exile target creature and put a 1-1 one -one counter on uh, Dark Imposter. So six mana, exile a creature, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. Dark Imposter has all activated abilities of all creatures exiled with it. Oh, it's Siler from uh, Heroes. Sorry, an old <laughs> reference. That's um, an expensive effect right there. Yeah, realistically, how much, how often are you going to pay? I mean, I think maybe their idea was you just cheat this in with uh, Strafon, and then you still have your mana available to do it. Sure, I guess. Cheat in three <laughs> mana, I guess. Yeah, you can, yeah, you're better off just playing your six mana vampire instead of activating this ability, I think. All right, what's the next one? We have Anjay's, Anjay's Ravager. We we go back and forth oh, between man. Anya and anyway whatever, <laughs> Anj E apostrophe <laughs> S Ravager go. All right, two and a red, three three. Um, 
Anyi Ravager attacks each combat if able. Whenever Anjay's Ravager attacks, discard your hand, then draw three cards and has madness for one in a red. Discard your hand and draw three cards. Yeah, the fact that you can't control when this happens kind of sucks. And you're only drawing three cards, too. So if you had five cards in hand, you would just l have less cards at the end of this. Yeah, exactly. And plus, you, you want to be, you know, keeping your hand in this deck, I feel like. so. And this is not a... Uh, yeah, because you, we said there's not a lot of recursion. So stuff that goes to the graveyard, you don't necessarily have a great chance to get back, not as built. Right. And then also, this is a three mana, three, three. Like, it's not a good vampire to yeah. cheat out either. You're not cheating this out. Yeah. All right, the next one we want to cut from the deck is Stormkirk Condemned. Black, black for a 2-2 two, two vampire horror. It says, discard a card. Vampires you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Activate only once each turn. So this is really only a madness enabler, I feel like, in this deck. Because mm. there, is, there is like a madness sub theme in here, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I think, you know, also we mentioned at the start, Strafon is not likely to get five or six creatures on the battlefield it's right it's, it's trying to get a couple of really big ones it's not going wide like edgar uh and this card could be really good in those decks because now you're discarding a card pumping your creatures it's adding six or seven power to the board right it's only adding two or three power to the board it's just not not as worth it for sure i mean you only activate it once each turn too so you know, that's what i'm saying is if you have two or three creatures uh, it'll yeah. add two or three power and toughness right right yeah it adds one one for each creature you've got so yeah plus the blood tokens are already doing this i feel like so yeah that's a good point all right, the next one is Bloodsworn Steward. Bloodsworn Steward. Two red red for a vampire knight, a 4-4, four, four, has flying. Commander creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and have haste. Ooh, seems good. Yeah, because you want Strafon to have haste, right? Right, but the thing is, this is a four drop itself. And what is Strafon? Also a four drop. I think there's a really good philosophy of Commander. I follow it as well, which is if you think about how the game is likely to play out, if you have Bloodsworn Steward in your hand, in your opening hands, yeah. where are you finding the spot to play it? Yes, it gives haste, but the fact that it costs the same as Strafon means you're always going to have to have the choice of do I play this before I play Strafon? And if the answer is, well, I play this before Strafon, then it's not it's not really giving the haste because you could have right. just played Strafon that turn. So it's really only giving plus two, plus two. Yeah, I don't like the tug and pull of this. And it's not a good uh, card to drop into play necessarily off Strafon's trigger. Right, exactly. It's not like you get to like um, trick your opponent and play it as a combat trick, right? They're going to see it before they declare blocks. Yeah, plus two, plus two, and nothing. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, it's just not, again, you'd rather have a five, six, seven right. mana spell to drop in. So yeah, an interesting cut. I don't think a lot of people would necessarily um, have thought of that though. All right, there's two to go. We're also going to cut Indulgent Aristocrat. It's a black mana for a 1-1 one, one Vampire Noble with lifelink. You can pay two, sack a creature, and put a 1-1 one, one counter on each vampire you control. Right. So this is a usually for the Aristocrat theme where you a sacrifice outlet and whatnot, but I feel like you're not going to have too many vampires. They're just going to be really like two or three big vampires. So it's not like you're buffing a big team to begin with, and you're going to be sacking what? A six drop vampire? Yeah, you don't... I think that's the key here. This deck doesn't have a bunch of ways to make tokens. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, there's a few ways, but not very many. Not token creatures, anyway. So, what are the creatures you're sacrificing to give all your vampires plus one, plus one? Probably a big vampire. Yeah. Which means that you're not getting a lot out of the effect. Because if you sacrifice a 4-4 four, four to give three other vampires plus one, plus one, you actually lost power on your board there. Yeah, definitely not yeah. worth it. So... Uh, this is another potential madness enabler. But as we saw, there was only like eight of those in the deck. So I don't know that it, we care much about madness. I mean, we might incidentally do it, but we're not like focusing the deck that way. Yeah. All right. And there's one more card to cut here. And it is the Rockish Air. Rakish Air? Rakish Air. Air as in uh, Air to the Throne also, not A-I-R. All right. Anyway, two in a red for a 2-2 two -two Vampire. Whenever a vampire you control deals combat damage to a player, put a 1-1 counter on it. Right, and same thing with the go wide strategy. We're not making a bunch of tokens here, and you're just minimally pumping your big vampires already. The, yeah, I think this one there's a little more argument for because you're hoping Shrafan swings two or three times and he becomes harder to block as it goes on. Sure. And, but still, this is pretty slow, and just, you know, the cards we've added are so much better than a card like this. And ultimately... You have to cut some things. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that it is, it's not necessarily saying, like this card's horrible. It's just like it's not as good as what we're putting in in its place. Right. Again. Like, would you rather have yeah. Seize the Day or Rocket Chair? Oh, it's not even close. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> easy. Um, okay. Let's talk a little bit. Those were the 10 cards uh, that we're going to take out. 
Um, let's talk about a little bit about how the deck probably plays, um, what the play pattern is. You know, I think you're going to want to get something on the battlefield early that can deal damage to everybody. So Cryptolith Fragment, Spear Spewer, something along those lines. Yep. There's going to at least get you two blood tokens. Or at right? least just an early drop, right? Because then you can maybe attack into someone. Right. But I think you've got to hit two people. So you want something that like either you can hurt yourself as you want and an attacker or right. just something that's going to at least hit two opponents because you really don't want to be a situation where you untap with Strafon on turn five and you don't have two blood tokens. So now you can't cheat out a vampire right yes. away. Yeah. And then um, you're going to want to play Strafon either turn three or four, depending on if you've ramped. And then on the following turn, you want to make sure that your opening hand has a big vampire he can cheat out so that you can get that advantage right away, get that extra. You know, when you cheat out a vampire that's six or seven mana, it's basically like you got a free six or seven mana, right? Yeah, for sure. And that's a good way to sort of jump ahead in the game and and sort of, you know, start start to uh, exert your will on the other players. Yeah, and then it could definitely get out of hand from there. People can't deal with it. Yeah, then you're hoping Strafon can really untap. And I think, you know, there is this unknown information. People don't know what you've got in your hand. So sometimes mm. it's easy, like, especially after you've done it once. Well, they already got the best vampire in their hand. How scared am I of the Another. second best vampire in their hand? You know what I mean? They can <laughs> right. talk themselves out of it. All I, and there's a lot of commanders now you got to deal with. Like, if I'm looking at a Strafon that's already triggered once versus a Chulain or a Corvald, I'm oh. killing the Chulain or the Corvald, oh, right? Easy. Yeah. So I think you have a chance here to to sort of steamroll, um, not steamroll, uh, uh, what's the word? Snowball out of control if you can get that first trigger going. And, and if you can really have a second vampire to get out with a second trigger, then right. you can be in a chip. Especially with the extra combats and whatnot. You can get people oh, out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. That's when it gets spicy. All right, to the listeners, what do you think of the Vampiric Bloodline pre-con deck? Any cards we missed? Any cards that uh, we suggested you should take out of the deck that you're like, no, you should definitely leave that in? Like that Shadow Grange, uh, what's it called? Shadow, Shadow Grange, Grange Archfiend? Archfiend? What, where do you fall on that argument? Would you keep it in? Would you take it out? What would you take out instead if you would keep it in? Um, yeah, what, what, what card are you like, no, this has to go in the deck and you guys did not add it? Um, remember, we have a budget. So if you're going to name a $50 card, like, yes, Sword of Feast and Famine is good. You should put it in there. But that's the whole budget. So you, we can't say that. Uh, Past the budget at that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> if you want to get your hands on this deck, uh, the other Commander Precon from Crimson and Vow or any of the, you know, any of this main set stuff, uh, collectors, boosters, whatever, channelfireball.com slash command. That is the place to go to order your magic product, singles, anything at all. You know you're going to buy magic cards anyway. If you're listening to this uh, budget upgrade guide, you're at least contemplating it buying this deck and upgrading it does seem like it's going to be a lot of fun so when you do that if you just use channelfireball.com slash command or use the code command at checkout you'll be simultaneously getting the cards you want and supporting the content that you enjoy and then once you get your hands on those cards make sure that you protect them you want them to maintain their value and the best way to do that is to use ultra pro products they are the best company for protecting all of your game pieces they'll keep your cards safe with their awesome eclipse sleeves they'll keep your cards clean and safe with their play mats and their deck boxes satin towers are just they are just impossible to like seriously if you have your car your deck in a satin tower it is safe it is good like yeah. th those things are solid they also have the mythic collection stuff which i really like because it looks super classy they have like um those new deck boxes also that kind of have the have the leather finish oh yeah and the those full art awesome. on them yeah those look really sweet they're again really classy with the stitching and they have you know super powerful magnets they're made with high quality materials so your deck is definitely safe in there yeah ultra pro we just cannot uh endorse them Enough. We really do use them here at the Command Zone for all of our own personal decks. So. They're great. Yep. All right. Now it's time for the end step where we talk about something cool outside the world of magic. Oh. Manson, you have something cool. What do you got? Yeah. So, um, you know, I think everyone has watched Squid Games at this point, right? But there is another Korean drama that on oh. Netflix that I think people would uh, enjoy. It's called My Name. Um, it's a crime action drama here. And um, it's is about, it kind of similar to Squid Game in some way? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like you know K dramas, they're they're kind of similar in in that. If sense. you like Squid Game, it might be a good entryway into watching K dramas. I got I will admit we watch some K dramas in my place. So yeah, that's a big rabbit hole to fall into. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, my name is actually uh, I feel like it's really good. It's about um, the this girl who lost her father okay. from um, some murder that she doesn't know, right? And then she joins this gang, this drug gang, in order to find revenge and find who, she who this person is. kind of goes undercover on her own? Yeah, find who this person is. Oh. 
and then um she actually goes undercover for the cops working for the gang so it's pretty interesting seeing the dynamic between um her working for the boss man in the game as well as the as the cops yeah as a cop herself is it um is it just one season or yeah it's one season right now they're debating of making a season two but i'm not quite sure on it right now but it's quite i bad. will say if you ha- if you haven't watched k dramas um netflix has a ton of them now uh, right. they added so many during the pandemic and a lot of them are so so good uh we just finished it a one class which oh. is a k drama we like that a lot um so oh, the actor um the the son yeah it one t- is actually in this in is this it series. my name okay yeah. i'm definitely gonna watch my name it sounds cool it sounds like a mix of true crime and k drama yeah for so, sure so i like that the mystery and stuff but if you like squid game um there's more stuff sort of in those veins or at least you know i mean Korean stuff is just so good. They, they yeah. do a really great job. I mean, I'm, I'm a Korea boo here, so yeah. <laughs> I, I love K-pop. I love Korean shows. That's, that's all me. All right. My name on Netflix. Big thanks to our editing graphics. Amazing team here at Command Zone. Our writers and everybody. We've got Arthur Meadowcroft, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Craig Blanchett, Ashlyn Rose, Alfred Estaca, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Patrick Nan, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Waldo, Gaurav Gorlotti, Chuck Tai, Jamie Block, Damon Lenz, Shauna Gillis, and Evan Limberger. Eventually, I'm going to have to take more breaths <laughs> in between because there's a lot of names on there. Oh, and special thanks to Jeffrey Palmer, who uh, often does the living card animations that sit behind us on set and, and, and the ones that start the show. You can find Jeffrey on uh, Twitter at livingcardsmtg. Woo. All right, Manson, thanks for helping us out. Thanks for giving us those recommendations. Sure. Yeah. I'll look forward to playing against your deck soon. Yeah. We'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. Thanks for watching, everybody. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans.